let's get in to how to blow. I teach a lot of people how to blow. It can be really challenging because not only does it depend where your head is, how you do it, um, how hard you blow, how soft you blow, it also actually depends on your layers and your pillow paint. Because if your pillow paint is thick, you have to blow harder. If it's thinner, you don't. And actually, I will show you an example of that too, I just thought of. So, what are we gonna do? Well, let's just get into it, shall we? I'm gonna use two different uh, pillow paints. One is thicker than the other. We'll see how that affects the blow. I'll do different styles of blowing and we'll just kind of see what happens because not everybody can blow the same way. The queen of the bloom, Shelly Carruthers, has an, has an amazing blow and she blows straight down and up and that's really hard and I'll even show you that I don't even think I can do it. Um, some people blow gently and slowly. I like to blow out petals. So it, it really depends on where you're at, but let's give it a go. I'm gonna use these six inch um, wood boards just for fun. So let's talk about pillow. Now they're not making these anymore, but it is a thicker pillow. This is Sherwin-Williams color to go. Um, I don't really know an American comparison to it, but I'll show you what I mean by it being thicker. So you see when I pour it, it kind of stays where it is more. That's a, another problem people have with thicker pillow paints is because they put too much and then they find it cracks. So for this size, I will put a little bit more, but what I do is I just put like a little bit and then I take my finger, oopsie, I'm making a mess already. And I go like this and I make sure to spin it out a lot. So this is a thicker pillow and I will, do my regular blow with a thicker pillow. So sometimes when I blow after I lay down my cell activator, I blow down a little bit first and lift my head just to open it up a bit. Then I tilt my head and I blow out the petals. Now where your head is, is very important because what I want you guys to try doing is tilting your head and in one blow, blowing the cell activator across the colors as far as you can, okay? And when you blow, pretend you have a neck brace on because I don't like, and I'm sure you guys don't like when you blow and you go, I'll actually show you what I mean by that, but you make little channels. We want beautiful petals. And to do that, you keep your head straight, but you lift it up as you blow. Let's see how it goes. I don't even know what colors I'm doing. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, I'll just do like three simple colors for this. Quinacridone, Nickel Azo Gold by Golden. Uh, I'll throw it. Um, this is TLP Pinot Gris, a green interference. I'm just kind of not even paying attention. This is TLP. No, it's not Lisa. It's Golden Teal. Uh, I think I mixed it with a bit of green to make it darker because I made these custom colors in video number 107, by the way. Uh, I'll do one more sparkly. Why don't I do sea glass? And I'm going to top it off with Matisse Southern Ocean Blue because my, um, my cell activator is white, which matters. So this blow, I'm going to do my normal blow with a thicker paint, and then I'll do my normal blow with a thinner paint. The thinner paint I'm gonna be using, which I use more often, is Glidden Essentials Eggshell. <coughs> I do leave it open a few days because it's thin, uh, but I like it better. So let's see. So, so I open it up, tilting my head. Now you'll see it's not going far. Because the paint is thick. And I'm looking at where I need to blow out. You can go kind of slow, okay? So this was harder for me to blow out because the paint is thicker. But you do see 
I do have a bit of the channels because it was thick to blow out, but not too horrible. Um, let's just spin it out and see, and then I'll do the thin one to compare. I mean, I probably could have used a little bit more paint, but I don't really see myself keeping these, so I don't really care. You'll And your cells will also look different depending on what pillow paint you're using, because thicker pillow paint gives you kind of tighter cells, thinner pillow paint um, gets you, it goes further, so it looks kind of more flowy and thinner. We'll just keep spinning her out. I hope it doesn't fly off. So I'm using the Shelly Art recipe. Um, I really suggest taking the class because that's where you get all of these fun, I don't mind these colors. So it's not bad what I did. I do have to do a lot more spinning to make sure all the paint is off. So, all right. Now what I do is I tilt a little bit to see but there's a bit of paint, so we'll keep going. I hope I can remember <laughs> what Larry I did to make it the same. So this was the uh, Sherwin-Williams color to go, okay? Which is a thicker paint, and you could see it was harder for me to blow the petals out. I think one more spin shall do it. Okay. So, wow, that's really orangey today, that um, nickel azo. So you can see, you don't really see the channels. It looks pretty uniform, not too bad. All right, now let's put her somewhere where we don't lose her. And I'll put her right here. Yeah, I want her flat, actually. Right here. Now, let's go to my Glidden Essentials. I'm gonna do the same thing. So you'll notice with the last one, I blew down in the middle. I really, it depends on my mood in that moment, whether I just blow out the petals. I'll do the same way I just did, just so we can compare. But you'll see that my petals will blow out further because this is thinner, even though I left it open for a few days. And you can see it, Spreads much easier. Okay. So, I wish you, someone was here to tell me what I paint I just did, but I believe I did this. And then I believe I did this. And then I believe I did this. And then I believe I did this. All right, I think we got it. So remember, I'm gonna blow out the middle a little bit and you have to aim your blow into the middle. Because if you aim at the petals, you'll still have a big gloop of cell activator in the middle, which we don't love. So you'll see, I'm gonna blow it. I'm gonna blow it out first, stretch it, and then aim for the middle. And I'm gonna lift my head up as I blow out so we don't get those little chop channels. I'm looking for the thick parts. So you can see that was easier to blow out. It went further and um, I was lifting my head up. So. Let's just spin this one out. So thinner paints are always just easier to work with, but they cannot be too thin or else things will kind of sink. And so that's why it's a bit sciencey. That's why I tell people to join the class. Oh, I have a 15% off in my discount, in my uh, comments down there, if I didn't tell you. This one isn't looking bad either, but you could tell it was easier to blow. And there's also less chance of this pillow paint cracking, by the way. So again, we covered the six inches. 
right? So let's compare the two. So that was the Glidden. This is, they look pretty similar, I have to say. This is the um, Sherwin-Williams. Oh, here you go. So at the end of the day, you see it's not, certain things are definitely easier, but it's not necessarily about your products. You have to know what you're doing at every level. So let's talk about bad blows, okay? So that was my blow, and I'll even embarrass myself and try a Shelly blow. Um, so let me put these aside. Well, because I'm so organized. Okay, let's remember, this is the Sherwin-Williams. I really can't tell them apart, but I bet in drying is when we would really see the difference because I do know a lot of people have a hard time with the Sherwin-Williams sinking and cracking more because it is thicker if you don't get enough on. Okay, are you ready for some embarrassment? So, and then I will do, once I trash that because it's so ugly, I will, oops, come on. I will do the bad blow with the channels that we don't like, okay. So I'll do the bad blow. Now this might be too thin for this blow because she really blows down into it. So I might get a lot of pillow paint coming up, but let's see. I don't even think I can do it to be honest. And she's so good at it. Okay. So I'm gonna do my thing. The reason I do this is because when I blow out my petals, nor in the normal way that I blow. I just want them to be able to go as far as possible. I don't want them to be stopped by anything. Okay. Wish me luck on this one, guys. This will be a funny one. So she starts down and she goes, and she kind of like does, which I can't do, does something crazy with her head. Well, not crazy because it looks so good. But, let's see. Should be funny anyways. All right, so what am I doing? So I'm going to go, all right, <laughs> I'm gonna try. I mean, she does do some petals um, afterwards sometimes, but, okay, ready? embarrassing but the I didn't maybe I didn't need to blow at the edges as much as I did so the trick is to blow up and get that middle part really big so you can see I got the middle nice let's see how it blows out I mean not blows out <laughs> spins out So because of that blow and then I started going on the edges, the edges are lighter because I didn't have enough paint or cell activator to blow out the edges and it's fine. Um, just a definitely different look. So we'll see, right? But I thought it'd be more embarrassing than it was. So that's definitely an option for people who can do it just to blow straight down to see what happens. Uh, but you'll see this way for me anyways. Um, I have bigger cells, but not as many cells around the edges. Let's compare it to the uh, Glidden, the other Glidden one I just did. So you can see when I did the petals, cause I blew the petals out on this Glidden, I have cells going over everywhere. And on the Shelly Blow, I don't, but again, I probably just need practice for that. Um, but for me, it doesn't work as well. So let's trash this one. And I'm gonna show you 
the way not to blow. Um, with the channels, hopefully I can do it, but just so you know what I mean. I don't even need to put that much paint because we're not gonna like this one. There's so many different layers of the bloom to make it work and it's freaking hard. It takes a long time. So I try to tell people, you gotta stick with it, keep practicing, understand your layering, understand your blowing, understand your temperature, understand your consistencies. There's a lot to know. Okay. Now, let's do the channel blow. If I can. I don't even think I've ever done it. This is my first time, so. But this is what I see a lot <clears throat> when I'm helping people. See like that? And it's making these little channels, which we don't like. And you can't even get anything out. Do you recognize that blow? <clears throat> That's because, <clears throat> sorry, I'm pursing my lips too much and I'm going like this. And that is not what we want to do. We want to get a big one like that. Now, obviously that wasn't the best blow, but it's an example, tilting your head. And as I blow, I lift up. See what happens, let's just play around. If I blow and I don't lift my head, okay? In comparison to it, if I blow and I do lift my head. You see how this goes much further when I lift my head than if I don't, okay? So we are calling my blow the blow and lift. Blow and lift. Blow and lift, look at that big pedal. That's what we want. <clears throat> we have a blow and lift pedal, and then we have a little channel blow. I like all these names I'm giving. So you can see what we're kind of looking for. Um, I think that's, did I cover everything? Should I do one more? Okay, let's do one more. And I'm just going to, cause we don't even care about this. <clears throat> Should I put a little bit more paint on it? No, not even. I'm just gonna layer some more and do it again. Okay, so remember, we are doing the blow and lift, and we're really keeping, we're not gonna get afraid of getting close to the paint and really looking at where we're aiming as I'm turning. Now, I, turning is something that I do, definitely something you don't have to do, but I find it easier because I see, oh, there's a big white spot right here, I'm gonna blow it. I'm gonna blow it. And my eyes are always looking at the direction that I'm blowing. Uh-oh, I'll do this one first. You know what I mean? So, that is the way that I find works, uh, this is not the same color as using. Uh, that is the way I find what works best for me in particular. Everybody is totally different, so I'm not saying that mine is the best. But what I'm saying is if you are having problems, it is good to practice totally different ways. And there are many totally different ways to do it. But we don't want the channel blow. That's, I am putting my foot down. All right, so here we go. You notice in that one, I didn't blow down first because I wanted to show you the difference. So, you see there's, like normally I might blow this one out here too a little bit. Just so you don't see the paint lines. But you see there's even coverage. It's gonna spin out really nicely. And with this method, you can really go bigger and bigger and bigger if you expand your blow. These are pretty. These colors are really nice. If I do say so myself. Oops, I'm getting paint everywhere. So this was the 
lift and blow with doing petals without blowing the center first, okay? And then I'll bring on over the one where I blew out the center first so you can see the difference. So, but the problem sometimes of blowing out petals without blowing the middle first is that you, if you don't have good aim, you could leave some, a big thing of cell activator in the middle, uh, which we don't like, but let's go back to the, this glid in here. All right, oh Lord, close. Now sometimes it's just the blow that makes them look different. You notice these cells are bigger, these cells are smaller, could just have been my blow, but they're both, they both kind of work. So I hope this little tutorial was helpful. Um, let me know if I forgot anything. And I hope, let me know how your little blow and lift goes. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye. And this was when I just did the petals. Nice sparkles. Hope that helps.